What's up everybody, it's Russ Layton with the Galster Real Estate Group. Thanks for watching my videos and today this video is actually going to be perhaps a little controversial, uh, but I just feel like being transparent and sharing information is so important because that's how everybody learns. So what I'm going to explain to you is how an agent may end up spending more money to help you get more money for your property and how that could hurt the agent in the short run, but how it will help them in the long run. And such is the case so often. Um, and, and, and by this, I wanted to share an example to make it real and show you how the numbers work. So for example, let's just say that I come to list your property and we decide to sell it for $300,000. And let's say that I do the normal stuff, I hire a professional photographer, I put the sign out front, put it on MLS and all the websites, and you get some traffic and some showings, and, and uh, you know after a few weeks you've got an offer for full asking price, and that's great. And let's say that we ex accept that offer um, and it closes, and so I end up netting uh, in gross commission $7,500. And that would be typical with a 2.5% going to the listing agent and then paying a 2.5% um, to the buyer's agent is the cooperating side. 5% is typical in today's market of 2019. And so after my broker split, let's just say that I pay him 25% of my commissions and I have about a 25% tax liability I need to plan for as an independent contractor, I end up making about $4,218.75. Well now let's say that I'm a super agent. And I like to think that I am, but uh, let's say that I go out and I also do a virtual tour and I have a video tour done and let's say I do some print marketing along with obviously the professional photos, the sign, the open house and putting it all over the internet. Um, and let's say that all that extra activity generates a lot of traffic and we get multiple offers. Ended up closing for $310,000 let us say. So an additional $10,000 in sale price would mean that you pay an additional $500 in commission um, to both buyer and seller side. So an additional $250 to the listing agent broker and which ends up netting me an additional $140.63 after taxes in my broker split. But now if we get into the expenses and let's say that I spent an additional $225 to market that property and that would be for the additional print advertising I did, let's say maybe the virtual tour and the video. Um, now, I ended up making $94 less than had I not done those additional things, but you, the seller, ended up netting $9,500 extra. So it is definitely in your best interest financially. Excuse me, I had some packages being delivered, it looks like. Um, it's in your best interest financially to, uh, you know, have the, the higher sell price. Now, for me, if it costs me, you know, some extra money to market that property, it looks like in the short term I end up losing. But here's where I want to explain how you need a good agent, an agent that cares about you. Um, so the short term thinking is that, well, I'm not gonna spend any extra money than I have to because the property will sell and I'll just do the photos and you know, put it online and maybe do an open house. And that's fine, maybe the property will sell. But the super agents, those are the ones that care about you. This is where the realtor comes in. This is where it's a real person, not a website you're hiring, the personal touch. They're the ones that are gonna help you wash the windows, maybe skim the pool before the photos. They're the ones that are gonna get you the sandwiches at the open house and bring a lot of traffic in and do the print marketing, okay? So it may cost them a little bit more money, but the reason that they're doing it is because down the road, we hope that we've impressed you so much that you tell your friends and family, hey, use Russ Layton, he ended up getting me a bunch of extra money and we had multiple offers and it was a smooth transaction. So that is why I do it. You know, I, I care about my clients. I try to help them and take that hands-on approach to real estate um, because it's a stressful time. I mean, I've moved zillions of times. It sucks, right? And I'm in the business of helping people move. That's just the reality of it. But if I can make that transition, that process, smooth, easy, you know, uh, profitable for you, uh, and then you go and tell your family and friends, that ensures that I can stay in business six months from now, a year from now, etc. And so it may not be in my short-term best interest uh, to do these additional activities, but in my long-term best interest, it definitely is. And that's how I take an approach to business. Um, you know, real estate is one of those careers that you kind of got to put in the time in the first six months, first year, you don't make a whole lot doing it, but you got to enjoy it uh, to want to keep doing it. And that's why I'm still in business today. Um, after over a year and a half, I've been doing real estate now pretty much. So. Um, that's why I wanted to just take this time to explain how um, 
you know, our interests don't always align necessarily, but if you hire an agent who actually really cares about you and wants to do a good job, uh, that's where they add the value. And, and that's something that I think a, a website just can't do. So anyways, if you have any questions about real estate, um, you know, feel free to drop me a line, call me, text me, email, whatever. And I'd love to uh, hear from you. And if you have some feedback on this video or if you see things differently, uh, drop me a comment or an email and, and let's chat about it. But thanks for watching and uh, hope, to, hope to see you out on the golf course or maybe out at a restaurant or something somewhere. What were my two guard dogs doing, huh? Are you watching the door? Is that FedEx? It's probably a Chewy order. Don't you want the Chewies? No, that a stretch. It's